Got the Utrecht special event slash regionals top 16 decks today guys amazing decks some decks we've never seen before S uh, Shout out to Tord Tord Reckler getting third place with an insane Charizard DX deck We're gonna talk about uh, uh, the deck and show you a little bit about the gameplay and how it works uh, But yeah, so it's gonna be an exciting video guys a lot of insane uh, Amazing decks to look at so let's jump right in Utrecht there was about 900 players in Number 16 comes Snorlax, Snorlax Bird, Snorlax Pidgeot. A little bit of a scary deck because it's a stall deck that can utilize Chi Yu once it's got set up, once it's slowed you down uh, efficiently enough that it can uh, utilize Chi Yu when you're looking for your top deck and waiting for your switch to show up. That's when Chi Yu can just come in and steal games. Kind of like Kermobnable, but yeah, uh, so that's what the Chi Yu does. But yeah, this is a very scary deck because it also can do some attacks. Lux right here can do uh, a lot of attacking. Also can really control the game early on. And that's usually what these guys rely on. It depends also on the matchups. But yeah, Lux Ray is an option here. Uh, Snorlax obviously only at 2, which is really nice. If you can get through these Snorlaxes. The problem is they come back because all these Super Rods. Let's see, what are we running here? Uh, Palpad at 1. Super Rod only at 1. Echoing Horn only at 1. No wonder we need the Pidgeot. We're running a lot of one-offs. Arvin at four, looking for your tools and for those bravery charms. Also two bravery charms, only one defines vest. So we are attacking with this deck. So we can attack with the Charizards. We can, once to, we get to lock in the opponent, we can either lock him in with Mawile or with the Snorlax or even with the Luxray here. And once we lock him in, even with the Mimikyu as well, if, once we lock him in, we can uh, start uh, discarding his deck for him also. So there's so many good options here. This is scary because it's it's opening up stall decks to become a really competitive deck. It's topping a lot. That's showing you how strong this deck is. Uh, and it's very scary to me because I don't like stall decks. I really hate them. There's no real uh, viability. Like, it's really boring to watch a stall deck. You know, that's why I don't like them. Watching them in live, uh, on live stream is very, very boring. So, but yeah, guys, interested in your opinions. This is the Pidgeot <laughs> Utrecht. Let's go, baby. Pidgeot Snorlax. Very scary. Maradon made it to top 16. Two iron hands here. Wow. Uh, he is running Squawkabilly. A lot of Maradons opt away from that. Also, Cobalion here, your basic uh, Pokemon attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active uh, metal Pokemon. So maybe he had a really bad matchup against the Goldengo, and this is to recover. Choose up two of your bench Pokemon for each of those Pokemon, search your energy for a basic attack. I don't think you ever use the second ability, you're just there for the Justified Law to deal a little bit more damage. So you can KO those um, pesky Goldengos. I can do the math here, 220... Plus the 30 damage at 250. So that's not enough to kill Goldengo. It does power up the Raikou a little bit. does power up these guys a little bit. But that's just not enough. doesn't seem like it's enough to KO. But uh, still did amazing. 15 energies in this deck. So electrical generators really popped off. And only one last vacuum. Only one bravery charm. Which is big. A lot of guys go for a lot of these bravery charms. We're also running beach courts here. We're not running anything else. So no path anymore. Uh, yeah, very strong deck, guys. Amazing list. And that's Maradon. Let's move on to Lost Box Paradox. Uh, so this is a Lost Box Toolbox. Uh, one prizer toolbox that can do a bunch of stuff. Also, actually, no, not necessarily one prizer, actually. He's not running the Char Charizard, so he's just a two prizer toolbox. That's what the Paradox is for. So you can go for the Dragonite V attacks can go for the Raging Ro Roaring Moon attacks or the Iron Hands. And Galarian Moltres can also activate his Roaring Moon. So it's kind of like a Roaring Moon deck that benefits from Cram and Dragonite as well. Also, you get the Greninja for a lot more draws. Let's look at the energy. He's running 11 energies. Yeah, because a lot of these guys are expensive. At least three energies no matter what. If he was running, for example, a Charizard, I think he would reduce this energy by one. <clears throat> also, one of the energies is a jet energy. That's big. I've never seen this deck before, guys. Look, get inspired. Four colors, two Raihan, uh, four Battle VIP, four Nest, four Mirage Gate, four Switch, three Escape, three Super Rod. It looks like seven is the magic number for switching. 
uh, two lost vacuum, one counter catcher, and a town store. Very interesting deck, guys. Two force seal stone there for the Dragonite and uh, the Galarian Moltres options there. But yeah, really interesting deck. No research. I don't see any researches. So just use chorus. Just uh, force seal stone for the chorus and made it happen. All right, guys, let's move on. We got Giratina Lost Box. Giratina did amazing this tournament. A lot of Tinas. Europeans really love Tina. Let's look at this Tina. It's going to be running path for sure. So three star, three Tina. One Cram, one Sibylai, one Spirit Tome, one Greninja. Spirit Tome just shut down the Mew. Shuts down the Palkia. Shuts down a lot of things. No, actually, it doesn't shut down the Palkia V star. But still, still very strong. Shuts down that Mew. Basically, it's for the Mew. It's uh, on top of the path. Basically, Mew cannot play the game. It's one of the worst matchups uh, against them is Mew. Uh, I guess Europeans really love Mew still. Poke Gear at 2. Yeah, it's a very straightforward one Avery just to play with the against the Mew as well. Mew still really strong matchup against the Mew. Avery is really strong against that. Also really strong against Gardevoir. So yeah, really strong deck. Three path. And let's move on guys. Lost Zone Box. This is a Lost Zone 1 prizer. But running Greninja. Four com Comfy, one Greninja, one Cram, one Sableye, one Roaring Moon, one Iron Hands, and one Kyogre. Oh, this one runs Kyogres. That's why I was, I was about to say, Greninja's just not enough, but Kyogre is enough, yeah. Kyogres for sure can make this enough. 11 Energies, four Colrus, uh, one of the Iridas. How many in Recyclers? Only one Recycler. And Pokestops. So he needed Pokestops because he's running 39 Trainers. Wow, really impressive, guys. Only 10 Pokemon. Really, that's that's the magic number. 10 to 11 is all you need basic Pokemon. After that, you can just mess around with it. Guys, we're getting close to amazing decks, so get ready. All these decks are amazing, uh, but we're going to see some special decks coming up here. Gardevoir. Gardevoir is very interesting here. Uh, a lot of Europeans love Gardevoir. It's uh, falling off a little bit. Not a lot more Gardevoir, especially with now with the rotation coming up. But we still saw this topping. I'm also going to show you Tord versus the Gardevoir and his genius of his deck. So let's keep going. We've got Jirachi here. Screamtail, Radiant Greninja, Manaphy and Zacian V. So pretty, pretty basic Gardevoir uh, EX deck. There's nothing crazy. I guess there's no two rows. Okay, there is one two row. How many switches are we running? No switches. So only one two row to save us. So there's nothing special about this deck. I guess we're running two Avery, which is big, but uh, good for the mirror match. But yeah, uh, I guess we're just going to... Also, we're running four Iono. That's huge. I've noticed that Guard Force are actually running Ionos a lot more now, which is very scary. But yeah, uh, let's move on, guys. That was Arthur's 11th place. Let's go to 10th place. Another Guard Force. Let's see the special technique in here. Anything special, anything teched in. By David Boyge, Collapse Stadium. No, very similar. Professor Stewart, one, two, every four. Iron. It's almost exactly identical to this deck, actually. Just we we have one less worker, and instead we opted to play maybe more fog crystals. No. Not sure the difference here. No, we actually have the worker. So exactly identical decks, literally identical decks. The, these two decks are exactly identical. Let me see if there's anything out of the ordinary. This one has the Mew. This one did not have a Mew. That's the only difference in these two decks is this Gardevoir had a Mew, that one did not. But that's it. Wow, Gardevoir is such a strong deck. Look how amazing it is. Basically, the same uh, list is just stopping right after each other. Look, another guard war again. James Cox here. Ninth place. Has been winning a lot with these uh, guard war decks. This one is exactly identical to the one we just saw for 10th place. This is exactly identical to 10th place. To this. Exactly identical. If there's anything missing, it's one card. But this is the same exact deck. Absolutely amazing. This, this list has proven itself, guys. 
Moving on, Giratina Lost Box. Um, let's see anything special here. Psychic Energy, Foreign Energy, nothing special, just a four path. No Avery's here, instead we just went for an extra path. And yeah, very straightforward, Giratina V. We've, we, this deck has been uh, locked in, I mean, this has been discovered as well. Let's keep going. We have a Charizard EX, Pidgeot EX deck. This one is pretty basic, running the Rotom, Luminion, Manaphy. Wow. Radiant Char Charizard, he is running one Jet Energy, that's a cool tech. But no Entez for it, so usually you run the Jet Energy if you run Entez, but this one's not running any Entez. And he's running one Roxanne here. Such a strong list, guys. Can't believe it made it happen. One level ball, one two lost vacuum, absolutely amazing. Congratulations to this Charizard DX Oscar. And then we move on now, another Snorlax, oh my god. I'm so scared, guys. These guys can just stall you out of the game, not allow you to play the game. It's so scary, guys. Look at this. I'm not... Oh, my God. This is the exact same list as the other one. You just maybe add a couple of Bravery Charms. Oh, yeah, a couple more Bravery Charms. My God, this is very scary, guys. When you see that these decks are number six place in a big, big regionals, this is very, very scary. Moving on, we have... Fifth place Charizard EX, such a strong deck Charizard. This one up to the way from any two prizers besides the, yeah, up to the way completely from any two prizers. Oh my God, this is a two, one prize Charizard deck, almost identical to the deck I run. Just he runs two, two TM Evos. I only run one. He also runs a Vitality Band. I run uh, a TM Devo. <laughs> wow, this deck actually made it happen. Wow, very impressive here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then ten. Ten basic Pokemon. Also four Iono, four Arven, three boss, three nest ball. How the hell did he fit all of this? Oh, he only went for two rare candy. That's how he did it. He went for two rare candy, one last vacuum. Wow, he has the energy switch as well. Also, he reduces the uh, board down. Wow, very interesting deck, guys. Insanely interesting. In, uh, what's your opinion about this deck, guys? Leave it down below. Let's move on to fourth place, Xiangpao, Backscalibur. Very basic Backscalibur deck. Everything is at four except Rare Candy, Super Rod, Earthen Vessel, and Heavy Ball. Yep. Also, he's running one Iono. Yeah, this is basically the same deck that actually took... Well, maybe not first place. I thought this was the exact same deck that, that Owen uh, Cameraman took first place with. But it's very close. This is Christian's Christian Sartan Rose deck. But as you can see, a lot of uh, guys did really well with this deck list. Alright, guys. This is the deck I'm very interested about. I need to show you guys this deck. This is Tor Drek'Lev's Insane Charizard EX deck. Another 10... What is it? Five, three, four, four, $5,000 for Tor. Just playing the weirdest deck. I've never seen anything like this before, guys. One PG, one PG, one Bidoof, one B-Barrel. One Rapid Strike V, one Rapid Strike V-Max. One Sobble, one Inteleon. Uh, one Medichamp, one Radiant Charizard, one Rotom, one Luminion, one Squawkabilly, one uh, Squawvet, one Mew, one Manaphy, one Jirachi, one Mawile. Absolutely insane. Literally ran every single Pokemon in the game <laughs> into one deck. I've never seen anything like this before. Two Iona, one Arvind. So this is where the magic happens. He uses four Ultra Ball, four Rare Candy to get the pieces he needs whenever he needs them. Besides that, everything he has is one off that draws him three. Like Avery's, uh, Worker, he has Peonias, he has... Uh, Professor Sturador there as well, Thornton to save him, also can kind of bring back the Mowile when he needs it. Wow, what an amazing deck. And if you guys are surprised by this deck, I'm going to show you a little bit of the action about this deck. It's absolutely impressive deck. As you can see here, Tord is genius. So he played this deck not only Charizard EX, he played it like Charizard EX Control. 
So he wasn't completely uh, relying on the Charizard DX. He was relying on locking his opponent out of the game. But Charizard DX is there for certain matchups. So what he would do is he actually in this game play, if you see this, he actually evo to the Charizard DX and then put the extra energy on this Pokemon, on his Charmander, instead of putting it on the Sobel to move it forward so he can get this KO. But this is genius and you're going to see why here in a second. So instead of getting the KO here, he actually kept the Charizard DX on the side, almost forcing the opponent to get a Gardevoir active so he can KO the Charizard DX. As you can see, he the opponent bosses in, and now he's going to move all his energies into the, the Gardevoir right now. As you can see, there's five energy. Unfortunately, he didn't draw his lum luminosity, whatever the, the energy gives you, three. But he did draw everything else he needed. So now he has nine energies. So this KO is this uh, Charge RDX, but watch how Tor Direct Lev uh, responds to this. This is insane, guys. Let's look at this. This is the best response in the world. Look how he responds to this. Unbelievable hand. I can't believe that this deck is actually in this insane. So starting with the Luminion, getting us our Thornton, which is insane. And you can see what we're going to do with the Thornton, guys. Bro, he played this game amazingly. Absolutely immaculate. He goes for the Bibero. He's insane. He's so genius, guys. He's so genius. He's going to put the four Seal Stone down, and then he's going to Squovet after he Thorntons. He Thorntons out the Charmander into the Bidoof. Watch this. Retreats it. Oh no, he thorntons out the Sobble, never mind. To the Bidoof, retreats it, goes to the barrel. Now he can Palpad in his Thornton if he wants to. What he's looking for is a Mawile guy. That, that's why he wanted to draw more. So he's going to Squall Vet, and then he's going to Mawile. And then if he doesn't find Mawile, he can force Seal Stone for it, guys. He's going to be happy. He's going to be okay here. But he needs Mawile and he needs an energy is what he needs. There it is. He has Suying Heavy Ball. Finds him a Mew. This is about to happen, guys. It's going to be crazy. Watch this. He's going to lock in the opponent, Kai. It's unbelievable. Kai is literally completely winning position, right? Let's move a little bit forward. So he gets the Mew down. I think he retreats, gets the Ultra Ball. There's the Mawile in his hand. We're going to put the energy on to the Luminion. And then we're going to pass, I think. Yeah. So now this is what's going to happen. You don't know what the energy is there for, but you're going to see. What happens is Kai doesn't really get to do anything except attack this turn because he already has all the energies on his uh, Gardevoir. Unless he two rows the Gardevoir out, he's uh, pretty much stuck in here. There's the second boss gone. We're at one prize. Kai's at one prize, guys. Luminion moves forwards. This is the final chance for Torrid. Can he make it happen here? Ultra Ball for the Mawile. We have no energy. I don't see energy. But it's okay because we can retreat the energy. Ret uh, put it back in. 
Yep, there it is. Oh my god, it's about to happen, guys. Puts down the Mawile. Now he can just... F oh, he can't even force Seal Stone the energy out. Because he took out the Rotom. So we can't force Seal Stone the energy out. So we have to rely on School Vet the Barrel to get us an energy. That's literally it. Now we counter catch a Greninja so we can lock him out of the game. Watch this, guys. We Iono. And then... If we draw energy, we win game. For Tord. Which is crazy that he, he figured this out. Look at this, guys. Tord's gonna school vet his whole hand out. It's trash. He needs one energy. That's all he's looking for. He doesn't care about nothing else. And now he's gonna be barrel. He needs one energy. There it is. He's drawn the energy. Moved the Mawile forwards. And now he's locking in Mawile. Kai does not have... A way to draw this out. Kai just loses the game there. I really need to hear what Rock uh, Tord was saying here. All right, let's listen to this, guys. I mean, I guess the easy, obvious question is, how did your deck come about? Because on that first deck search, I'm sure everyone was looking at their screens like, what am I seeing? <laughs> I mean, I've been, uh, I've been cooking this for some weeks, months now. And this was kind of like the last opportunity to play it. I never really felt like it was good enough to bring to a major, but I feel like I got really close at least now. And the deck has a lot of, you know, different avenues to play on. So I figured today was the day to bring it. Yeah, I mean, so wow. we are currently 3 -0. It seems like, you know, um, poetry in motion. Hopefully it keeps going for you. Now, with a deck that has so many, you know, one-offs and intricacies, how did you how did you work out all those car counts? Must have been a lot of testing, right? That's crazy. Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of different processes, right? But yes. uh, here I just put a lot of different you know options into one deck, and then I tried out a bunch um, of again different one one type of everything, and uh, I cut cards I didn't like, I added cards I maybe liked, tried to solve problems here and there, and in the format as it shifted. Um, try to make sure that there was enough consistency versus tech and and so on and it's it's like a difficult thing to balance but I, I'm like relatively happy with where it ended up as you can see like it has like basically all the support Pokemon right in, yeah, sure. yeah. so like all of them together I mean at least maybe you can set up something even if you know I have a lot of one offs yeah wow look at the deck list thinking I don't see a lot of draw cards here. And I looked at the bottom of the Pokemon and I saw, ah, there we go. There's all the there's all the draw cards there. Now, I must imagine, Todd, that when you showcase a deck like this to your testing group and friends, what was their reaction to it? Oh, they were they laughed at this. <laughs> <laughs> Are you playing that? Okay, okay. I would I would don't want to do that, but do you go ahead, you have fun. That was, that was <laughs> Okay, I love that. So do you have any advice, lastly, to anyone who, you know, if it was inspired, look at that deck, seeing it take a convincing win like that, what advice would you have to any budding deck builders? I mean, don't uh, don't let anyone limit you. Play whatever you want and try out everything and uh, just try to have fun on the way. That's, that's what I'm doing, so. I think that's fantastic advice there, Tor. Don't let anyone... Absolutely amazing, unbelievable deck, guys. I cannot talk better, more about this deck. I cannot talk more good things about this deck. Absolutely amazing. We showed you, showcased the, the deck for you. Now let's finish up the, the top two. It's a Roaring Moon by Filippo. Pretty uh, basic Roaring Moon here, running eight, uh, 10 energies. Uh, never actually activated Greninja. Never seen him activate the Greninja. So I'm not sure what the water energy is there for. <laughs> Just to, uh, I guess for two turns, putting in two waters. That's the only way he could activate it. And then, yeah, pretty straightforward deck, guys. And then one final deck. Fusion Mew actually made to the finals. Owen Cameraman is just such a genius. This is his second regionals back-to-back. He just won one with Pow. Now he won one again with the Mew. A lot of bad matchups for him, but he made it happen.
So as you can see here, he runs the SQ for some steals. Uh, Elsa only had two, two judges, four crams. Uh, the heavy ball is there. Feather ball is amazing. It helped him out a lot. Four seal stone at three. One only box disaster and one path. Pretty, pretty amazing game. Uh, pretty amazing deck, guys. Absolutely insane tournament. The special event was huge. It was so much fun. I'm super interested about your opinions, guys. What do you think about these decks? What was your favorite deck? And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. We're doing insane amounts of content. We do daily content and we stream daily. So stop by every day. We'll see you.